Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord Brunson, back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I gotta let you know, if I, or I wouldn't be doing my due diligence, that Manscaped is just one of the best products for male grooming around. You know what I'm saying? Use code Brunson, save 20% off, and get free shipping. Get in tune with products like the Lawnmower 4.0, the Foot Duster, the Crop Duster, the the the, the reusable blades. Manscaped just is. It, listen. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people don't use the code. Use the code and see what I'm talking about. Also, your Hurt Season hats are still available. Get on the train now. You know what I'm saying? Because when I pull these receipts of everybody who don't like Jalen Hurts for some strange reason, you want to make sure you're on the right side of the playing field. Listen, man. The development of the wide receivers, in my opinion, has been really, really good. Really on the upside lately. You've been hearing great things. That The guys we need to show up have been showing up. Quez Watkins, we needed him to develop. It seems like Quez Watkins has fast-tracked his development somehow. He went from being a project last year under the Doug Peterson uh, regime to being a guy who's going to get significant playing time under the Nick Sirianni regime. Is that a coincidence or is that just player development? Or is that Nick Sirianni giving guys a chance to play despite, you know, uh, it could be a number of things. I mean, I felt like Doug Peterson and those guys felt obligated to give playing time to Deshaun Jackson and um, <clears throat> Alshon Jeffrey based upon age and stature and things that they have accomplished in the National Football League. Now it's just been a total changing of the guard. You're giving new guys opportunities and new guys are showing you that, hey, man, we could play this game as well. So you need a Quez Watkins to develop. Then you got things like Jalen Rager making it. Amazing catch after amazing catch the last couple practices. You see the development there. And then um, what they do is, you know, it's two types of development that I'm seeing happen with the wide receiver group. You have um, competition, you know, a competitional development. I'll explain a little bit. And then you have just, you know, development by, you know, by committee or development by coaching staff. Now, Aaron Moorhead was retained, one of the only coaches to, you know, keep his job after Doug Peterson was fired. Uh, that's not a coincidence. I think a lot of people believe in Aaron Moorhead, and he's been around some top-notch wide receivers. Played around some, coached some. You know, he's continuing his legacy in that, uh, in that, in that, in that department of you know being a head coach, a wide receiver head coach. And then you have competitional development. When you brung in Devontae Smith, I said I've been saying this all off season, steel sharp and steel. That's the way I've been saying it. You got other people. Other people going to make up their own little phrase to kind of be that way. But that's what's happening. When you bring in Devontae Smith, it lights a fire under every other wide receiver in there. Because you drafted a wide receiver two years in a row. You even see J.J. Ortega Whiteside out there looking more productive. Even though I don't think he's going to make the roster. I think it's a long shot at this point. But I think he does have a chance. He's out there doing some really, really good things. And you can't, you know... <laughs> I think a White Sox could be arguably having a better camp than Greg Ward. Because I haven't heard Greg Ward's name a lot. Hightower been banged up. I don't know where Hightower is going to be, you know, when it's time for these roster cuts. But the development of the wide receivers has been amazing. Um, Kerryon Johnson was let go. Um, he was released, cut, or whatever however you want to say it, um, about 24 hours ago. Um, not even. Um, and... and it's kind of a shocker to me because in terms of guys that's supposed to make this roster, I thought he was one of them, you know, but this just increases the chances of Jordan Howard making the roster. I'm worried about the running back position for numerous reasons. Now, we all know that Kenneth Gainwell is a guy that's supposed to be thought of as a Swiss Army knife, but Kenneth Gainwell has dropped a few balls in practice. Miles Sanders is still having an issue with the case of the dropsies. Carrion Johnson was never really a receiving running back. And you have Jordan Roster who's on the roster who's not really a receiving running back. This could possibly take away a dimension of the game for us if we can't identify who's going to be this guy catching these passes. Boston Scott may be the best pass catching running back on the roster right now. But Boston Scott is also the littlest guy. You know what I mean? All of these guys have like key attributes that are different. You know what I mean? But we need all of those things in one running back or just a lot of those things in two running backs, if that makes sense. Miles Sanders, once he gets a hole, he's gone. Um, Jordan Howard is a bruising back straight north and south. Um, Kenneth Gainwell can play wide receiver. And Boston Scott, you know, Boston Scott could catch. We need all of that in one running back. And, you know, it's 
I'm, I'm worried about the running back position. I don't know if the addition of Kenneth Gainwell has, you know, messed up, you know, the focus of Miles Sanders. I'm not going to go there just yet, but uh, we need to do what we got. to See, the development is never over for good players. Miles Sanders' development has to continue clearly. You know, we need to get the best out of Miles Sanders. You know, I don't think he'll drop a lot of passes in game, but when running backs drop wide open passes out the flat, you know what I'm saying? That kills drives. And we got to kind of get that corrected. Uh, and other news, man. You know, this taunting rule is just, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I don't like it. I don't understand it. Why we have to, you know, um, take that out of the game. Listen, football has always been a braggadocious sport. When you get a first down, when you get a touchdown. The dances. We remember B Doc for for the dances and the Ray Lewis is for the dances. We remember Dion for the high step and stuff like that. And not just we don't just remember him for the, for those things. We remember Freddie Mitchell for putting the championship belt around his waist. We remember certain things. You know, it, it takes us back to you know a time and place to where football was just everything to us, and it still is. But when you take away Taunton. It's just ridiculous, man. I think I think you turn it into something other than football. You know, you know what I mean. When you, when when you're when you're engaging in a physical contact sport like football, and you are trying to conquer the next man who's defending you or whatever the situation may be, you are just happy that you did that. And sometimes you show it with with body language. And I don't think that should be a flag. But you got owners. Um, one of the New York Giants owners, what's his name, John Mara, um, he he's he's against taunting. He thinks that guys are talking too much and not playing too much. See, this is how I look at this for John Mara and the New York Giants. I think that they're used to being bullied, and this rule, you know, goes. This this rule fits them. It helps them out. Think about it. They haven't won a division in ten years. They've been trash. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we've owned them. We've done a lot of bullying. You know, they got to deal with a lot of cyberbullying as it is. So why would they have to deal with that from opposing teams? So, of course, the Giants would be against it. But I just didn't expect that from one of the oldest franchises in the sport to be against something that helped make the sport great. It just don't make no sense to me, man. So I'm pro taunting. Um, I mean, it's not really taunting. It's celebrating. Like, come on. How do you even distinguish the two? How do you distinguish the two? When teams get interceptions and run to the opposite end zone and post with the fans, that's a part of the game. Are we giving flags for that? You want dudes to be robots? Or is this another situation to where it's just, you know, shut up and play? Come on, man. You can't take the fun out of the game. The game is supposed to be fun. You can't. What you, next, we're going to have these dudes out there playing in suits and ties. Next, they can't have pads. Next, they're going to do something about hairstyles. It's just ridiculous, man. But let me know what y'all think in the comments, man.